Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy and it's a Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And we're still in Trophy Nut's month of memes. And as promised in the end of the last video, we're going to be taking a look at Northern Realms. And no, we're not going into mages, as you might have already seen from my uh, highlighted card here. We're going into Siege, more particularly into the Super Siege Salsa deck. So the Super Siege Salsa deck, it's a mouthful, I know, but I wanted to add like three words with the letter S, because otherwise the abbreviation would have been something. Um, so yeah, that's why it's Super Siege Salsa. And of course, this is a Siege Northern Realms deck with the Inspired Seal ability focusing almost entirely on Siege engines. As you can see, there are a lot of them in this deck. You can check out the deck for yourself using the link to the Playground website in the description of this video. You can import it into your own game. Don't forget to upvote it on the website as well because it's going to help me out immensely. But this deck is a powerhouse uh, aside from just being a big meme as well because of course it's just all out siege and all out siege is a lot of hurt for your opponent which factors in really well with the current meta where there's a lot of small um, engine guards that can be easily destroyed by the onslaught of siege engines that we will be generating but i'm gonna go through each and every single card in this deck one by one but if you're not interested in that you see the cards in the list here and you say okay i know what all of those cards do let me check out the example matches on how to play this deck you can do that as well by skipping to that section using the timeline down below. To anybody still here, let's go check out those cards. As always, we're starting at the very bottom. So at the very bottom, we have the four provision cards, the Kedweni Revenant. There's two of them in the deck, three powerful four provisions, and on order you damage a unit by one. And if you kill something with that one damage, so it can be one of your own units as well, you spawn a base copy of a Kedweni Revenant on that same row. Uh, which can give you a swarm of Cat Wenny Revenants when you keep it going. So this card can just go from a 3 power unit to 3 power and 1 damage to 6 power and 1 damage because you generate another Revenant and so on and so forth. So every kill that you do with this card will generate another Revenant. Got a buff recently, so went from 5 provisions to 4 and is perfect for the soldier tag since we're, um, we need a lot of crew members for our siege engines as you'll see in a minute. Then we have the siege support, of course we can't this guy, so 4 power for 4 provisions, uh, is a soldier as well, so counts for crew. If you deploy him on the melee row, which is what we will mostly be using him for, you reduce the cooldown of an allied unit by 1, so you take that down for 1 turn. Uh, if you do him, put him on the range row, instead you boost an allied unit by 1 instead, and on order you can give an allied unit zeal, so on the next turn, which can come in handy really, really nicely as well. So just all in a very good uh, support card, as, it, as the name says it is. Then we have a double winch. A winch is a warfare card when you boost an allied unit by 5 points and reduce its cooldown by 3. Um, for most cards in this deck, aside from our best card in the deck, this will basically reset the cooldown immediately. There's a few good targets for this, but um, yeah, you can just put it on most of the cards with a cooldown and it will work just fine. Now we have Bombardment, of course, since we're playing Siege, we need Bombardment. We have two of those in the deck as well. So Warfare card, where you split four damage randomly between all enemy units and you increase the damage by one for every Siege engine you control. So if you have four Siege engines on the board, you will dish out eight damage randomly across your enemy's units, which can wreak a whole lot of havoc. On top of that, we have the Immortal Cavalry two times. You might think, what? why are you using these cards? Well, the Immortal Cavalry is pretty interesting. So you get six power for five provisions. Since you deploy, uh, on deploy, you spawn a base copy of this unit on the same row. So you have two, three power units. Both of them will have a shield, which is a good defensive measure, but that gives you a crew pocket immediately. Now, it doesn't spawn the copy immediately to the right of that unit. It just puts it on the extreme right of that same row. So you could nestle in a siege engine that you already have nicely in between two soldiers in one go 
if you needed to. And for a lot of our siege engine abilities, we will need this too. So it's a very good way to get a, a quick soldier pocket. And then we have the uh, probably the best bronze siege engine in the game, the reinforced ballista, three power and one armor with the formation ability. So meaning that if you put him on the melee row, you gain zeal. If you put him on the range row, you gain an extra point, but no zeal. So you can't use the order ability immediately. On order, you damage unit by one. You can choose whatever unit, so you can even um, attack units on your side of the board and this ability refreshes every single turn and if you play a warfare card then the cooldown refreshes as well so potentially uh, a lot of damage pings from this single card especially if a few if you have a few of them on the board of course a siege engine so that will come in handy later on as well then we have two Caraballista. Caraballista is a five power siege engine for five provisions and on the boy if you can nestle him between two soldiers he will gain two armor not that that is the most important ability because the order ability on the range row you damage an enemy unit by two so he doesn't gain zeal out of his own but we have the siege support to give him zeal immediately giving you seven points and this card also has a cooldown of three so every three turns you will be able to use this card again or for example if you use a winch you can use that ability immediately so a uh, very good card in this uh, deck giving you even more damage than you already have and then one karak frigate uh, the karak frigate also counts as a siege engine which is kind of a weird thing to call a ship but yeah it is counting as a siege engine four power and one armor for six provisions and on order you spawn a volunteer on this row so a two power soldier if you have this card in between two soldiers at the end of your turn you refresh the ability regardless so if you can put him right to the right of a soldier you will always get the crew ability because the volunteers will be spawning to the right of the ship so most of the time you will have the crew available to keep this engine going then we have reinforcements a warfare card that allows you to spawn and play a base copy of a bronze allied unit most of the time we're going to be going for the ballista of course because uh, not only do you copy a ballista you also refresh the uh, cooldown of the ballista that you just copied because of the fact that reinforcement is a warfare card so very good card in this deck again giving you another option to play on yet another siege engine and as you might have remembered the more siege engines on the board the better because bombardment will have more damage when it does now we have john natalis immediately immediately going to the eight provision slot so two power for eight provisions counts as a soldier and on the ploy if you put them on the melee row you play a warfare card from your deck so it can be anything you want but most of the time we're going for amphibians assault and that is a card i'm going to be discussing in a minute then our bigger siege engine we have full test sprite so five power one armor for eight provisions has zeal and on order you damage an enemy unit by two and units adjacent to it by one meaning that this card already gives you nine points and a point of armor for eight provisions which is not bad but he also has a cooldown so you can repeatedly use this ability if this card is in between two soldiers when its cooldown uh, resets back to its maximum value um, the cooldown is set to two instead of four which means that if you put him all in between two soldiers already and use the order ability after two turns you will be able to use that again it always counts at the moment the cooldown is reset so if you lose the soldier in between then the cooldown will be four the next time it rolls back around so very important to keep in mind but again a very powerful siege engine then Prophet Lebioda also got a bit of a buff so now eight power for eight provisions and is a really good card to protect all your siege engines with so whenever you play a unit next to Prophet Lebioda give it a shield that shield will take the first hit of damage on that card so meaning that um, cards like Alzu Thunder, Boiling Oil, Nature's Rebuke can just kill your um, ballista in one hit since they will be protected by that shield of course if your opponent has another way of dealing damage then it will be negated but still it's something that your opponent needs to overcome and with the eight points of profit Lebiota, it's a big body to try and take out which is not going to be simple and if they manage to do so then that's another removal card that you don't have to deal with anymore so definitely a very good card in this deck and then we have definitely without a doubt the strongest card in this deck Rafford's Vengeance this is the card where this deck is built around you want to have this card either in hands or being able to pull it with Amphibious Assault because Rafford's Vengeance starts at five power for nine provisions you can give it zeal with our leader ability 
because the order ability means that you play a bronze unit from your hand and then draw a card. This is why we have so many bronze units in our deck and why it's not that bad to have this many bronze units in this deck. Because this card just basically thins them out while also playing them on the board. The cooldown of this card is 5 turns, but with the winch and the siege support, you can basically repeat this every 2 turns if you manage to pull all of them. On top of all of that, if you have crew whenever you play a unit right next to this card, you also damage a random enemy unit by 2 on top of all of that. So this is one hell of a siege engine. Um, mages also contribute to this card's crew ability, but we don't have any mages, so you will have to focus on getting enough soldiers to trigger the crew ability. Although every crew hit on this card is just a nice bonus, it's definitely not a requirement. Then we are uh, going into our uh, tall removal card, so Saltkirk of Gullet. Sadly not a soldier, so only counts as a knight, but 5 power for 9 provisions and on order on the melee row you duel an enemy unit. Dueling means that you hit the enemy by your own power and then your the enemy hits you back with their own remaining power and that goes back and forth until either unit is dead usually you can well always you can win every duel you go into as long as your opponent isn't above one and a half times your own power so for example for five you can kill something for seven if you go into seven power with inspired zeal then you can kill something up to 11 if i'm not mistaken so 12 is going to be too big but 11 is still manageable barely but that's basically the rules for dueling because our next card is also a dueler so prince ansees has the formation ability so starts at four power but if you put him on the melee row he gains zeal if you put him on the range row he gains an extra point if he is not boosted when you use his order ability he damages an enemy unit by four if he is boosted you duel that enemy instead again with the same rules at as with saltkirk so you can kill something that is roughly up to one and a half times your own power Give this or, of course, Saltkirk a shield through Lebioda and you can go up to two and a half times because the first hit that you get back will hit the shield and you won't take any damage, so you can just keep going. Very powerful tall removal cards that are uh, vital in this deck because they are the only way to kill something that is really big. The other siege engines will clear up the lower enemy units. And now we have Renew. Renew is going to be used to play Rafford's Vengeance twice. Yeah, we're going to be this meme -y. So play a unit from your graveyard with a provision cost of 9 or less and give it Doomed. Rafford's Vengeance is exactly 9, so that is perfect for this card. If you don't have Rafford's Vengeance in your um, graveyard anymore, you can just uh, resurrect John Altalis, the Foltest Sprite. There's enough targets for this card if you want to, or even Lebioda if you played Lebioda before. All of those cards are very good targets to Renew. Uh, but usually just go for Rafford's Vengeance. Having Being able to use that card twice is just immense. Then we have Amphibious Assault. We talked about that quite a bit already, but it's a Warfare card that you can use twice. So an Echo card where you play a Northern Realms unit from your deck with a provision cost of 9 or less, and you can boost it. Well, it is boosted automatically by one for each provision below the limit. So either you can get a boosted siege engine from your deck or you can use it to grab Rafford's Vengeance really, really early and quickly. And then the final card is of course the scenario card Siege itself. So uh, it progresses whenever you play a Siege engine. The first one you play is a reinforced trebuchet which damages a random enemy unit on the range row by one except if you have crew then it just doesn't really care about the row, it's targets. Um, the next one is the battering ram, where you can move it back and forth to the front row and the melee row, and every time he goes into the front row, you deal damage to the highest enemy unit by uh, three damage. Um, and then, of course, the final one is bombardment we just talked about, which should do at least seven damage with the amount of uh, siege engines on the board already. Um, should actually do eight if none of your siege engines were destroyed. Um, Rafford's Vengeance is also really interesting in combination with Siege because Rafford's Vengeance is the only card that can technically trigger Ra uh, Siege twice in the same turn. So you play Siege first, then wait until your next turn, then play Rafford's Vengeance, inspire Zeal Rafford's Vengeance and play another Siege card with his ability, with its ability I suppose. So uh, completing Siege in just two turn with turns, which is really powerful, but usually we want to wait out on playing Siege until the uh, last few cards and at that point Rafford's Vengeance should already be out. But uh, I'll show you that in the example matches 
in a minute. So our stratagem is just the tactical advantage where you boost an allied unit by five, so simple as that. And that of course the leader ability is inspired seal where you have three charges of giving a Northern Realms unit on your side of the board two points extra and give it zeal, meaning that they can use their order ability immediately. So these ones should go to Rapid's Vengeance, uh, Saltkirk or um, Prince Ansias. So those are the targets for this leader ability. And that's that, that's the entire list, uh, which means that we're gonna head straight into the example matches. So first up in the Super Siege Salsa is Shield Walls, so Northern Realms Mirror kinda. And we're going into Shield Wall, which is going to be interesting. Our first hand gives us Amphibious Assault, so that's the card that we really want. I can keep Renew. And this is actually a pretty good starting hand. Let's get rid of one of the Siege Supports and we get a Trebuchet, well, a Ballista instead. I'm going to make that um, mistake quite a few times, I feel like. Uh, I can keep most of these Bronze cards because all of them are going to be useful. Maybe not the Get Wenny Revenant, although it is damage. Let's get rid of the immor uh, Immortal Cavalry instead, and we get Ansys, okay. That is fine. And we get Visogota immediately. So Visogota immediately, that is ballsy. But I could just pass immediately. <laughs> this is a weird way to start this. Sadly, I don't have the Immortal Cavalry, because that would have otherwise been a good way to start. But let's see how this works out. I'm going to use Amphibious Assault. On to uh, Raffert's Vengeance. This is going to be mostly our uh, main play. Uh, let's use Inspired Zeal on Raffert's Vengeance. And we're going to be using it on a Siege Support, which immediately puts the cooldown down to 4. And now we're going to end the turn there. That gives our opponent a lot of ticks, of course, and that's a defender on top of that. I'm not going to be able to do anything against all of that. Um, so yeah, Visigota is pretty well protected now. I could now just do Winch, but I'm gonna start out with a Cadwenny Revenant, in, although Winch is probably better now, because I can immediately, yeah, let's do Winch, which means that I can use Raffid's Vengeance again. I can use the Cadwenny Revenant over here and put it right next to, yeah, there we go. We get hit over there. I could technically give it Zeal, but that's gonna be a waste of uh, points there. And we get Anna Strenger immediately, which is uh, yeah, basically the, the base boosting combo of um, Northern Realms, which is interesting. Um, I'm not going to have anything to destroy with the Revenant. So might as well just use... I'm going to use the Carabalista in the back here. Um, and I can seal it immediately with the Siege support and then just... Um, hit the shield of Donimir and then the armor, it doesn't really matter at this point, but we can start dishing out some uh, damage. And then the Trident Infantry. Yeah, this is not going to be good. So that's a good combo. Um, plenty of charges on this Visigota still, so we're going to just pass. Pass at 7, the classic play to pass at 7. So yeah, that was a pretty annoying starting play. Something that I haven't seen these days, but it's a, a pretty classic Gwent move. The uh, Visigota on a string and then try them infantry move. We get Natalis. Natalis gives us an extra warfare card. I would like Siege in hand as soon as possible. Bombardment isn't really necessary, I think. I do like the um, Immortal Cavalry just for the automatic pocket that it gives me. So let's get Bombardment out of the way and we get Lebioda. Which means that I can now just use Raffert's Vengeance again, but that might be a bit too quickly. So I have three more bronzes in, in hand, so I can see what this uh, will give me. Because um, I'm going to use a Cadwany Revenants, the frigate is going to produce more volunteers, so we can kill those volunteers in an attempt of getting more of the Kedwini Revenants. And our opponent keeps going and we get a Warfare card that's going to be a Boiling Oil. Oh no, Amphibious Assault. Amphibious Assault on a Siege Support in the back. And they're not going to give that Volunteer an extra shield. Which means that I might as well use the Reinforced Ballista. Reinforced Ballista in the front, hit the Volunteer and then hit the 
volunteer with the Revenant. And we should have enough points next to, uh, since we can also kill Natalis. And now we get Raffert's Vengeance. Okay. Raffert's Vengeance, which was zealed immediately. And they got really lucky with that one hit there. Um, still plenty of cards to use. I could now use Prince Ansees. I think that's probably the better option here. Prince Anses onto um, an inspired zeal. And that's gonna be hitting the Raffords Vengeance for seven and then two back. So that there goes the Raffords Vengeance. And then I kill the volunteer in the back so they can just keep generating those. And I will just keep getting points back for that. And then we got a boiling oil on our revenant that's not too bad i can actually use i could use reinforcements i can use one of the hits of the ballista over there then use john natalis to get reinforcements out of the deck and copy the cat Wenny revenant and put it over here in the back and then i can hit another volunteer by one because of the warfare card that i just played so i think our opponent's might pass. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the Immortals now as well, the Immortal Cavalry, and that should give us a good uh, a good starting point here. I'm just gonna kill that one, and then hit that one over there. Doesn't really matter anymore. There we go. Okay. So that's equal points. Our opponent did use, I think, only one charge just yet, right? On the shield wall. Can't really check at the moment, but I think there were two charges left. Double Bombardment and then the Immortal Cavalry. I'm going to keep the Immortal Cavalry and start getting rid of the Bombardment because I don't have... And just try and get rid of the Immortal Cavalry here. Yeah, let's do that. We get Siege. Okay. That is really good. So Siege is going to be our final play. Instead, what we're going to do... We still have Natalis as well. I don't actually need to bring back, although I could, that could actually be pretty glorious, now that I think about it. Let's bring back Raffert's Vengeance, um, Inspire Zeal the cards, there we go. We could get unlucky now and only not pull a bronze, although I think they're all bronzes. There's two warfare cards in there though, so let's see, we can play the Carabalista in the back and we get the Trebuchet, which is going to be good. Um, which also means that we still have a couple of cards there. We get Prince Ansius, which is now gonna, yeah, destroy our Raffert's Vengeance card. Not that much of a problem. Um, we can now, so we still have about two engines. But I also still have an Immortal already. I think I'm gonna put the Immortals in the f... No, let's start with Lebioda. Lebioda in the front, so I can start providing shields to certain units. So our opponent has a single shield wall left. And that the Marian Drummer is boosting up Ansys again, so they are aching to use that again, sadly. So it's annoying that I need to use Amphibious Assault now, but it's more important that I use it now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Um, so I'm gonna use it to put the uh, Immortal Cavalry in the front. That already has a shield, I am well aware of that. But that gives me the pocket that I need for a minute, for in a minute. So that's another Amphibious Assault onto another Frigate, that is fine. That gives me a target for Siege now, so I can put Siege in the back. There we go, giving us the Trebuchet that will hit the Frigate. Then we get the Karak City Guard, which will probably... Does that move? I, that can probably move the Reinforced Trebuchet. But then we get Full Test's Pride. Do I use Full Test's Pride? Right now, it's not going to make a difference. So I'm going to use Seltkirk first. And then hit the Prince Ansius there with two points again. So it can't destroy my Seltkirk even if they have uh, Varaxxus. But now they can move my Seltkirk. Yeah, okay. They could have moved that. That was pretty smart. Um, but I also have Folter Sprite. Folter Sprite has the um, the shield here. 
Uh, well, not the shield, but has the crew. So I can actually just hit it like this. Also, although it will get another um, shield wall in a minute, so it's not going to make that much of a difference. There we go. There we get a Karak Marine. There we go. There were, there were going to be another four points of uh, boosting there. And then we're going to get our, um, our big bombardment here. So we use the trebuchet right next to Libyoda so it gets a shield. Although... Do I first take down the... No, it's not going to matter. So let's use the reinforced ballista that's going to trigger the bombardment. Which is going to hit a lot of cards. Um, then the battering ram to the front. And then the reinforced ballista onto Prince Anses again. That was just, as you can see, a boatload of points. We get Seltkirk again, but Seltkirk is going to have to survive this. That is interesting. So I can get rid of the shield regardless, um, like this. And then we can use the Cairo Ballista on Prince Anses, because I want to actually do this so Prince Anses can be reset. Um, and then Bombardment, which will trigger another bunch of hits. And another single hit on Seltkirk. So I need to get Seltkirk down as low as possible so we can dish out as less amount of points as possible. But it didn't really make that much of a difference. Because, uh, yeah, that's not going to kill anything of value. There we go. We managed to get out on top of that with our double reference vengeance. So as you might have seen in that previous match, it all comes down to superior firepower. We face Squirtel next with a movement deck, which should also give us the advantage. Because um, we have enough firepower to take out those uh, pesky, pesky cards. Um, we actually have a pretty good starting hand. Most of our win conditions are here. We could play... I'm going to leave Prophet Leviota out for now. Bombardment isn't going to be that useful now. Well, not as useful as the winch is going to be. But I do have four bronze cards at the ready now. I could even get rid of one of the Kelweni Revenants, just to be able to pull another one later. And now with Natalis, I can actually pull the Bombardment, so I can get rid of Bombardment and get another one in return. Of course, of course. Okay, so we'll start the same way as we did before. We play Raffid's Vengeance, we inspire Zeal the uh, card, and then put a Siege Support right next to it. There we go. I'm gonna leave the uh, stratagem for later because we can use that to protect something else that is way juicier, like the uh, Kedavani Revenant, maybe. So then we get the Pyrotechnician. The Pyrotechnician is pretty good at its job, but I am gonna be using the Winch on Raffid's Vengeance to immediately use it twice. So let's use it again and we can put the Kedavani Revenant right next to this card now. That's gonna trigger for two damage. Uh, which is good, and then we're gonna boost the Kedwani Revenant up to 8. Giving us a bit more defense against whatever might be coming next. We get hit on the Revenant, which means that the Revenant can actually be destroyed by a Nature's Rebuke. There we go. Uh, nothing else from our opponent so far, so... The chances for me actually getting another um, hit with Raffid's Vengeance are gonna be slim. But what I can do is get the other uh, Kedwani Revenant out, or Amphibious Assault on the Frigate. But the Frigate is a bit too powerful to be using now, I think. Uh, so I might just be able to bait out another Nature's Rebuke with just using a Caraballista. Yeah, let's do that. So Caraballista in the back. Uh, I could zeal it, but that's not that useful right now because it doesn't have uh, a target for those two damages. And there we get the Whisperer of Dom Latana. That is a low play, so what I'm going to do is use Amphibious Assault so I can use it late, although I don't need to. If our opponent now passes, my hand is actually pretty good. I don't really need the extra points right now, and I can use Amphibious Assault in the last round if I really need to. So I'm just going to use Immortal Cavalry over here that's going to trigger another two damage hit and I, I can use the Caraballista to hit it and our opponent is going to pass regardless. So uh, that's a seven point pass there. Okay, our opponent doesn't actually pass. Okay, wasn't expecting that because I mean, we're quite ahead. So we're 23 points ahead. Our opponent still has an extra special card and maybe with... 
but I don't think so. Even with sim loss, we're only still at six though. Uh, so just to be sure, let's use amphibious assault on what are we at with Rafford's vengeance? Hmm. But I don't, I don't really want to use Rafford's vengeance again. So let's just use amphibious assault now then, um, and use it on the Gedwani Revenant. And put it right next to Rafid's Vengeance again for another two point hit. So, yeah, if our opponent doesn't pass now, then I don't know when they are. And there we go. There we have the pass. If my cards are good in the next round, I might actually go for a 2 0 here. My hand is pretty good. We have extra warfare cards, we have the trebuchet, we even have a tall removal option. If we can get renew, then. Yeah, all bets are off, there we go. Um, now I'm even tempted to get rid of Bombardment. That's Southkirk, I don't need two Duelers. So I can get rid of this and we get another Bombardment in return. This looks pretty good, especially since we have Renew. So Renew can give us another Rafford's Vengeance, setting up a boatload of Siege Engines, although I do need to be careful with Siege itself. Will depend on the draws I get with uh, Rafford's Vengeance, but this might be pretty big. So, Renew into Rafford's Vengeance, Rafford's Vengeance into an Inspired Zeal, and then getting us the Siege support right next to it, and we get another Bronze card immediately, so uh, this could be huge. And we get moved on the Rafford's Vengeance, so that's going to get destroyed by Nature's Rebuke. That is absolutely fine. We still have a couple of um, siege engines ready here. Um, John Natalis could have gotten us the winch, but of course that's now not possible. Um, I can get another siege engine out and that could be the frigate. That is probably even the better option. Um, so let's get the frigate out with... Amphibious Assault, boosting it up to 7, and we can seal it immediately to give us that sweet, sweet extra volunteer. And now we get Simlas, there we have the uh, the Simlas combo that was uh, long overdue, I think. And now we get, I think that's one of the movement elves. And is that a Whisperer of Dolblatana? I think so. Yeah, so Whisperer of Dolblatana and a Dolblatana Sentry. Okay, that is fine. I think it's high time we start using Siege to our advantage. So Siege in the back and then use another uh, Volunteer over here. So our opponent is setting up for a movement combo. I'm not going to get it, uh, let it get that far, I think. I should be able to take out whatever our opponent dishes out. That Trebuchet might actually die. But it's not that much of a problem. We get way late on the Trebuchet. Gives our opponent a bit more points. But not that much of a problem, I think. We can use the Caraballista now. Which will give us two extra points in a minute. And then the Karak Frigate. Could have used the Trebuchet first, but I feel like the Trebuchet is going to be pretty vulnerable. And with the way the board is looking right now, I really want to kill something that's big enough. We get another Bountiful Harvest. So sadly, now that's not going to go onto the card that I wanted it to go on. Um, but with what is coming next, I'm gonna just first play the trebuchet, not the trebuchet, the ballista, because that is gonna trigger bombardment. Bombardment is gonna try and kill most of what is on the board. So, what is the most important right now? I think I'm trying to see if I can kill multiple combo pieces here, but it doesn't seem like I can. If I get really lucky, I could, so I can hit um, the Whisperer by 3, then hit the Forest Protector by 1. And then the Battering Ram could technically go for the Sorceress of Dolblatana. So if I do this, we sadly don't get it, and we get another Volunteer like this. So that was a pretty good one. We still have 4 Siege Engines on the board, and we still have a Bombardment in hand, and possibly another one, yeah. But there we go, they do get the Sorcerer off. And that is gonna be a circle of life on... That's gonna hit the... Uh, ah, I would have hit the Ballista. The Ballista is a bigger threat. Okay. That was slightly awkward, but um, let's use Bombardment uh, again. 
taking out most of the cards here. Ah, I should have used the um, the Ballista first, but uh, there we go. We can kill the uh, annoying card there, the engine card first. Next up, we will be able to shuffle the... Um, ooh. Oof, oof, oof. Okay, that's a good one. That was a pretty nice one. That was a lot of points, but... I can kill it. So I can move the battering ram back. I can use Prince Anses over here. And then just zeal it to kill... Um, I would, wouldn't have even needed to, to zeal it here, but uh, Gasrels really needs to go. Um, and then I can just hit something else over here and use the Karak Frigate. I'm not going to use the Karak Frigate. I still have John Natalis. Natalis needs to go on the front row. So if I don't use Natalis... If I want to use Natalis, I'm going to have to do it properly here. And that doesn't kill. Oh, that's really sad for them. Because uh, now I can kill that Cat Witcher with a reinforced Ballista hit. And John Natalis is going to do another bombardment. Which should most likely hit the Cat Witches. Yeah, it just hits everything. But I don't have a target anymore. Although I could do this. This gives me one extra point. <laughs> yeah, that was that was might have been a little bit of overkill, but I think uh, that gives us the three, the two zero. -oh. So it's thirty one zero now. We get fourth into isn't games council maybe, and then into Gord. So there we go. That's gonna be a fourteen point Gord. Uh, no, the boost cannot exceed. So that's fifteen. So they need 11 more points from their final card, 12 more points even, because the uh, the movement flip is only doing two extra. Ooh, wow, okay. The brand coming in clutch. Okay, never mind, that's not a 2-0. Well. But our opponent did spend most of their good cards. Did we, we still have Lebioda and a winch, but not, not that, oh. Oh, well since we don't start, I think the winch might actually be better. What else do we have? We have Saltkirk, but we don't have... I think this is going to be fine. So we get the Catwitcher first. That's moving it to the front. I can move it, my own trebuchet, to the back here. And then we get a tempering on the, uh, the Witcher, the Catwitcher. I can hit it once. And I can only use Voltus Sprite once either, although I could use it again. Cooldown is 4, so that means that once it goes to the next turn, it will go to 3. I'm gonna have to see what this does. Because I'm not 100% sure how this works. I think it goes to 3 when I start my next turn, so the winch will reset it. And we get another tempering, so that means that I have the round regardless, because that's only gonna do 1 point. And now I can use the Reinforced Ballista once, use the Winch on Voltest Sprite, use the ability of the Winch again, uh, the uh, Voltest Sprite and the treb not the Trebuchet, the Ballista again, and there we go. Just enough points to... Uh, that was a very clutch uh, brand there. Okay, and the final match is another mirror match, now completely with the same lead ability. That is going to be very interesting, but if it is mages, I should be hard countering this. We have our big players in hand already. I don't really want to change too much to this. Um, I'm going to get rid of Bombardment. I get Reinforced Ballista instead. The Winch can stay. I might as well keep the Get Winning Revenant and get rid of the Immortals. Yeah, the Immortal Cavalry. Now we'll see. If this is Mages, this might actually be a good demonstration of how to face a deck like this. And we get Letitia in one go, okay. Um, Letitia is too dangerous to keep alive, but I only have Saltkirk, and Saltkirk will... Uh, Saltkirk would actually just be able to kill it. Yeah, so let's just use, um, for once, Natalis into Amphibious Assault, into Saltkirk instead. And then we're going to be zealing Saltkirk into killing um, Letitia here. We don't want to leave Letitia alive. If Letitia survives, then that, that it's just no good. Now we get Queen Adalia. 
Um, Queen Adalia onto a Banart student. I'm gonna have to be creative here. I'm gonna be using the Carabalista first. So he's gonna be able to do two damage in the next turn. Unless, of course, this get all gets all stunned, but usually a deck like that doesn't run all stunned. I use that in my Spellweaver deck, but this doesn't seem like. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. A Spellweaver. Zealing that thing. Just for the extra punch. So I could put the reinforced Ballista down now. Um, or the Siege support. I think like this is probably better. So I can take out the shield of the Ban Art student. And that should give me just enough juice to kill the Ban Art student in a minute. And now we got Rafford's Vengeance, but Rafford's Vengeance is not going to stop us from doing what we want to do. So that's another Ban Art student. That's only going to be three hits, so they won't be able to kill the... Um, the ballista here unless they use the no they don't okay let's hit the banard student over here then hit the cara ballista with a winch and then use both abilities again on the uh, banard student that got the highest already so far and now we get the chapter of wizards that is pretty big of course another rune word and that's going to be another Banard student. So, I think I'm going to pass. That goes up to two. They can't let it go up to... Oh, they can get it up to four. But it's only going to be four. I could try and kill it again. Um, there are options for me to kill it. But it doesn't seem worth it at this time. Although I definitely could. So I can hit it with a 1 damage over here, then use the Siege support to reset the uh, order, and then use it again. And then now we lose the... I think they should have done that before already, the Ballista. And that's going to boost the um, the Banard student again, I'm assuming. Absolutely fine with that. Because now if I pass, so that's going to go up to 4 max. But for the alumni, there won't be any any alumni, I suppose, because the um, the other student needs to go to four as well, and I can stop that definitely with siege, because they're all in the ranged row. Um, so now we can actually use Rafford's Vengeance in the next turn. We do have the cards that we need, and I'm gonna keep everything else. Everything else seems rather nice, so I'm gonna just keep it at that. We do have two more Inspired Zeal Charges, our opponent only has one. And we start with a Spellweaver. Um, not that much of a problem. I can use Rafford's Vengeance. Use it over here. Inspire Zeal it. You know the drill by now. And then we use Rafford's Vengeance onto the Siege support. We get the Trebuchet, which is going to come in really handy in a minute. And now we got the Aratusa student, so that was what we were expecting. So now they're going to be setting that up. So we can use the winch. Use it on Rafford's Vengeance and play the Reinforced Ballista. For once, I'm going to put the Reinforced Ballista in the back so it gets an extra point. Yes. And then we can use the Siege support to zeal it and start ticking down the uh, Aretuza students in the back there. And I should have used Siege before that already. We get some Resurrection going. I'm going to play Siege. I really need to play Siege because um, those are now up to two, so I can't leave them alive any longer. So Siege onto the back row. We're going to keep killing that same old um, Aratusa student in the back there. Sadly, the... Although, it probably works in my favor here. I was going to say, sadly, it hits the other one, but this works in my favor. I could also resurrect Seltkirk. Not that I really want to do that at this point. Because these are going to be at three in a minute. They really need to die. Now, I might even inspire Zeal a uh, Revenant for that. Ooh, a winch on one of the Aratusa students. 
Um, so definitely coming in clutch there. Um, I'm going to use the Revenant now. It's going to hit something. That in the front. Inspire Zeal. On that Revenant. And then Ballista the uh, back student. And kill that one. This one is already at 6. I should have noticed that sooner. I should have killed that first. And there they go on to the reinforced trebuchet. Gerhard of L immediately going into teleportation. Replaying that Bannard student putting up to 7 now. And there goes the Revenant. Oh wow. Thank you for all of that. But no tanks. What am I to do? I have an idea for that in a minute, but right now there's not much I can do to stop this. And then we get Seltkirk with the final um, dueling option here. Are they actually going to use it or just standing around? 7 damage and then the, uh, the kill. There we go. Yeah, Foltest Sprite is next. That's going to trigger the uh, scenario again. We can hit Seltkirk over here and I keep leaving these two alive. So uh, sadly, there's not much else I can do about this. And there we have the first alumni. It's going to boost up Shani. We get another boost from the um, Aratusa student. And that is that. Okay. Um... I can hit the highest one for 3 damage, I can renew um, Raffert's Vengeance, but we're not going to get the zeal on it, so that's not going to help. So what I'm going to do is, I still have reinforcements in the deck, so I can use reinforcements to double up on the um, reinforced trebuchet, which is going to give me a boatload of extra points. So um, Natalis into reinforcements into the trebuchet, which is going to trigger the bombardment as well, which should be enough to uh, kill all of these. Um, like this, there we go. So that got us the rounds, we got card advantage, but now... That's going to be a bit of a problem, because these are at 7 damage right now, the alumni. There's at least one more in their deck. Chapter of Wizards it's, is gone though, so... There might still be an option for us here. Um, bombardment is not going to be it. The frigate, however, the frigate, however, might actually be an option. What else do we still have? We still have, yeah, Anses. I'm going to get rid of the Immortal Cavalry, which seems weird, though. No, let's get rid of the Carnivalista. Um, this, oh, wow. Um, let's do Prophet Lebioda first. I can shield whatever comes next. Which is going to be the um, the frigate. So the frigate is going to be shielded, but of course with that bad art student they can block that. We'll see how far we get with this. So that one point of damage could hit the frigate and stop our uh, damaging short. But I think our opponent might be out of luck with the, um, the cards that they're getting. So double shield, does that actually work? Double shield. This unit should now be double shielded, but I don't think we're going to add a shield on top of... Uh, something else. I think this is as good as we're gonna get it. The alumni will be another 11 points, but yeah, as you can see, that should not be enough. And two points on this. We get six from the... Um, yeah, there we go. Okay. It's over. It's over. Our opponents kind of played all their good cards at the, uh, the first rounds there. So, there we go. Immortal Cavalry and another ship there. Okay, that was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. They were forced to use their better cards um, and therefore we won the game regardless. And there you have it, the unyielding onslaught of the Super Siege Salsa. I love that deck name, um, if I can do, do say so myself. Um, yeah, as you can see, this, this deck is really good at dishing out a lot of damage, keeping your opponent's board really really clean and this is also the deck that actually got me to pro rank which is uh, what all these matches were played in by the way if you hadn't noticed already so again you can find the list in the uh, the link to the playground website in the description of this video don't forget to upvote that and uh, yeah
With that, we can successfully end this video right here. What did you think about the, well, what do you think about the uh, deck that we just showed, the Super Siege Salsa deck? If I need to say it three more times, I'm not gonna be able to. Um, but what do you think about this deck? Did you, do you like it? Do you have any improvements that we can make upon this? Um, it is a meme deck, but I think it's one of the more powerful meme decks that I've pre presented in this month. So it can definitely get you to pro. It can definitely help you um, rank up a bit on the ladder especially in those early MMR stages so uh, do give me some feedback what you uh, your experiences with this deck were because uh, I really really enjoyed this deck it's been on my list for quite some time already I had this build in the previous season already uh, but never managed to get to the deck guide itself so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video this deck guide on the Super Siege Salsa deck and uh, as always thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.